Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. I think mindset is behind everything, right? Because even a failure, is it really a failure? Or is it something that, you know, a company or an entrepreneur had to work through one of those challenges to get to where they want to be? Today, I'm chatting with Maria Trano, entrepreneur and personal success coach for business leaders. This episode is brought to you by the Pest Rangers. Finding insects in your home can be a real pest. I know I felt that way when I discovered termites living rent-free in my house. But thanks to the team at the Pest Rangers, I'm no longer bugging out over this issue. So if any creepy crawlers are cramping your style, there's no if answer bugs about it. You've got to call the Pest Rangers. For more information on how to rid your home from unwanted pests, call the Pest Rangers today at 570-826-1114 or visit them online at thepestrangers.com. This episode is brought to you by Kavanaugh's Grill, one of my favorite places to eat and drink in any PA. They've got one of the best outdoor patios with 13 TVs and over 20 beers on tap. You can also dine inside at this cozy Irish-style pub where your beer never goes empty. Did I mention how delicious their food is? Their in-house smoked brisket, barbecue ribs, and wings are to die for. So grab your friends and have a drink on me at Kavanaugh's. Mention code STACKS for one free draft beer with purchase of any entree when you dine in. Located at 163 North Main Street in Mountaintop, Kavanaugh's is open at 4 p.m. during the week and 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday during football season. Dine in today at Mountaintop's only Irish-style pub. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show-approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low-impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. What's up, podcast? It's Bill Corcoran Jr., host of the On The Stacks podcast here in the Blue Door Studio, protected by our friends at Richie Security Solutions. Maria Trano, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pumped. You brought me this amazing fern. I did. I love it. I don't know if it's a fern. I don't know. Is it? I don't know what kind well, of plant we're, it is. We're calling, we can call we're it. Just, we're just calling it a fern. Yeah. Uh, fern. I can't even say fern. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you brought this lovely plant for me. So thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. Plants are a big part of my brand and I know how much you love branding. So I, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I thought I'd share the love. Yeah. So basically you just like you're infusing your brand into yes. mine. Yes. Because one plus one equals three. That's right. I really believe that. Because we're going to continue to grow. Yes, together. Yes, I love it. <laughs> but not, it's not a love fern. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> no, this is a friend fern. A friend fern, a yes. new podcast studio building fern. Yes, a celebration of Cel- your new space, Celebration, which is incredible. Celebration fern. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, congrats. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's really great to be here. And uh, you were asking me before we started, like, you're like, you, look, you looked around, you're like, oh my God, what did it take you to put all this together? Yeah, I and could tell like, it was a lot. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm still out of breath from it. And, and I've been in here for like weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was good. It was fun. And um, it was an experience for sure. But we made it. You're a pro now. Yes. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, no, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I, I was, you know, we, we talked a little before and, and the word mindset came up. And right before we started the show, I, I said, I, I really, I really, I really failed here. I really screwed up because... Normally, I wear the mindset hoodie on the show, and I know everybody that's listening or, or people that watch the show know that I basically wear it almost every show, like a you know goof because it's the only piece of clothing I own. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, no, I just I I'm I'm like obsessed with the you know with mindset and that whole theory, and and I know you are too. And you know, like I said, I did a really bad job at remembering to wear my mindset hoodie today, so I apologize. Okay. Um, I, I tried to plan it, and then somehow it slipped my mind. That's all right. But we can just I'll pretend. You. We can yes. pretend this pretend. says. Yeah, we're just gonna pretend this says mindset, and yeah, you know. But I feel like that may be a good a good place to start. You know, with somebody like you because. You know, you're really into this this world of you know this type of thinking. Yeah. Uh, so I love having conversations with people like that and like you that are yeah you know, we're kind of we're in that same we're yes. in that same world. Yes. So like on the stacks, we'll be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. If a son or a daughter of a mom or dad that thinks there's been nursing home neglect, you're not wrong to think it. Uh, so the first thing I would do, if you're in that position, is to go right to the nursing home and ask to speak to the director of nursing to report what you believe to be nursing home neglect. So they can't really hide from the neglect that's been out there for the last several months. And now we're back on the stacks. Where does it start for you? Well, I think when you, when you step into entrepreneurship or even freelancing before you begin your official business, there's so much that comes up in terms of mindset, right? Uh, entrepreneurship is like a personal development one-on-one or one-on-one. Um, you can't help but go through that journey. So 10 years ago, I started Inspired Studio, marketing and design company. And over those years, I mean, so many things have come up. I've always said so many times, like, there's a challenge to overcome, every single day. It might be something small, like how do I respond to this email? Or it might be, how do I hire my first employee? Or how do I protect myself with an attorney? You don't know. And every day is something new and every day it's a new challenge, but we are the ones that have to show up for it. So, I mean, entrepreneurship and mindset are inextricably connected. Yeah. They go hand in hand. Yeah, they are. hundred percent. Um, all right. So, you know, you, you had inspired student. You still do that, yes, right? Yes. All right. So so explain like, so you did that for 10 years. Yes. Right. And then what was it, you know, what was it after that 10 year mark that, what was there a change? Yeah. So there was a change and it was a personal change. I, you know, I've been building brands for companies and small businesses for 20 years. So people come to me with an idea that they want a logo. And of course, I'm not just like, oh, I can't, I'm not just going to make something pretty for you. I want to know everything about you. I want to know why you started your company. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know what your mission is, what your values are, how you are going to show up in the world, how you make people feel around you, how customers interact with your brand. What do you want them to do after? Like, There's a million questions I would ask before I would even touch a design. And, you know, Along that journey, I've seen businesses come up with really cool ideas and we brand them and sometimes they are successful and sometimes they aren't. Some businesses have closed after I've branded them. Some businesses have like triple and quadrupled. And from being behind the scenes, what's the difference? If the quality of work that is put you know being put out is the same is it is it the people is it the mindset is it the mission is it the economy what is it do you have the answer i think it's mindset is it i think it is bill i think i, I think i knew you were going to say that i think mindset is behind everything right because even a failure is it really a failure or is it something that you know a company or an entrepreneur had to work through one of those challenges to get to where they want to be, you know? Yeah, I don't think... So it's it, how yeah. do you look at it? Yeah, and I don't think any failure is really a failure. Never. Mm-mm. You know? Um, even just like little losses, like little... Mm-hmm. Like I call them micro losses. Yeah. Because it's like you just constantly learn. Yes. And I feel like it, and we're going to really like... Everyone's going to hate the word mindset after this episode. <laughs> but if you have the right mindset about it, right? Just like that. Like you're just... You're learning. Yes. You know, and if you can, if you can um, accept that, mm -hmm. right, and, and, and just keep going with that no matter what, like, yeah. you adapt that mindset of constantly learning and growing. Yes. And then soon you're going to have a 10-foot tall fern <laughs> growing and, <laughs> yes. so, you know what I mean? Like, no, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's mm -hmm. just, it, it's, it's all, it really is all about mindset and this whole, actually this whole episode 
I, I tricked you into um, this is actually a commercial for my merchandise. <laughs> uh, so if anyone wants to go to on the stacks dot com slash merch, yeah, they can buy they can buy that mindset hoodie. Oh, I'm buying yeah, it. Yeah. So this is actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I planted this. Um, Seed. This, this. Yeah. Ex- <laughs> this is it. This is just a this episode, a whole commercial for my yes. mindset hoodies. Yes. Um, kidding, of course. But um, but no, I, I agree. It's it, it really is all about, you know, the the journey and the entrepreneurship journey. And, um, you know, for you, like you after, you know, like you said, like after 10 years of doing all that, you came to this point in this, like, you're kind of like, were you kind of questioning, like, what am I doing? What, what am I, why am I doing all this? Like what? Well, yeah, my personal, okay. So where I was going before is businesses are a reflection, especially small businesses of the entrepreneur, the solopreneur. It is our passion. It is our purpose that exudes throughout the entire business. But I think what can happen is people change. We're supposed to change. We're supposed to evolve. And that's why I love the fern, because I think we can learn a lot from nature. What I love about nature is it's going to grow to its fullest potential every single time. Like a tree is not going to be like, oh, that tree is prettier than me. I'm just going to like stay small over here. No, every single creature, living thing on this planet tries to grow to its fullest potential Except for humans. Yeah, it, we just hit these roadblocks, I right. feel like, some people, right? We do, yes. And so when our business is a reflection of us and we change sometimes or we want to change or we feel a change coming, we 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 struggle. And, and that's kind of where I got to was that I was going through a personal change myself and I was like, ah, I can't change. I can't be a coach. I can't coach people. I'm a designer. I'm a designer. I'm a designer. I've dedicated my entire, all of my learning and all of my time and my entire career and starting my business to designing and be, and like really mastering the craft of design. How could I ever do anything different? What would my clients think of me? What would my team members think of me? What would my parents think of me? What would my friends think of me? Like everybody knows me as a designer. So was this like a small crisis? Like you it were like- was, it took me three years. Okay. So it was a little bit more than small, but like, yeah, I it mean, took you... me, it, it took me three years to go through that kind of mental what battle if? in my head. And I actually, I hired a coach because I tried everything I could find to get me through it on my own. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but it, um, it helped me realize that I kind of already was a coach. It was always part of me all right along. You're just doing it in a different way. I was just doing it in a different way. Like thinking about all those questions that I would ask my logo design clients. Not every designer does that. That was, that's part of who I am is being curious and, and wanting to know the depth of people. And so now I get just. I get to do that as a coach too. All right. So, so, so like, so this, you know, I feel like part of this, there's probably a lot of like psychology, right. Mm -hmm. That goes into a lot of this. Like, Mm -hmm. did you, did you like start researching like stuff like that? Like where did, where did you start? So I started, um, so I started my company, right. And I grew, it grew, it grew very quickly. Like I quadrupled it in the first few years and I was experiencing, such success um and then my husband and I had two kids in two years and so I was being a mom at home and running my business from home and I didn't have a huge team at the time so a lot of the pressure was on me and I think going through that while business was fine on paper I had it all I had the husband I had the family I had the support my in-laws are incredible um I had the business, you know, I had team members, I had the clients who trusted me and believed in me. I had it all. But there was one day that I can remember still being in bed. It was one o'clock in the afternoon and my kids were at daycare and my husband was at work and it was one o'clock in the afternoon and I was still in bed and I hadn't had a sip of water and I hadn't eaten a single thing. And I realized, well, the first thing that went through my head was like, man, my parents would kill me if they knew I was still in bed right now. <laughs> like growing up in a family restaurant yes. environment, like get, they hard work get is. Get to work. Yes. Get up and do something. Like I've been working all day, like up until this point. But so I remember that moment so clearly. 
And here's where it got really pivotal for me and where it shifts into the mindset piece is on the way to daycare every day and on the way back, um, I would put podcasts on in the car. Hopefully mine. This my, is pre. This is pre, pre this my, is, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. This is pre on the stack. Okay. <laughs> and um, I would listen to business mindset podcast and I was obsessed and I can remember listening to a podcast. It was an interview with Dr. Shannon Irvin, who was is a doctor of neuropsychology. And she said one thing that day that stuck in my mind. She said, a thought always precedes an emotion. When you watch the brain, it could be nanoseconds, but a thought always precedes an emotion. So that day, I can remember thinking to myself, like, I have it all. And why am I still in bed? Like, why am I not feeling fulfilled? Why am I not happy? I literally have it all. And um, and that thought came to my mind. I remember that. A thought always precedes an emotion. And I got really curious. And I was like, okay, what do I have to lose? I'm going to go down this journey of figuring out what's the thought behind this feeling right now. And it took a while. It's not like, oh, I asked the question and the answer immediately popped into my head. But in my research, um, I went down the neuro coaching path. This is the psychology rabbit hole. Yes. Right? Yes. There I couldn't learn enough. I could not learn enough. Um, and so I, I just, I became engulfed in it and I started to practice it on myself. I'm like, okay, well, if they say this and I try that, how is that going to change my life? And eventually it did. It really did. It, it pulled me out of that, that space. Um, and it helped me see the world in such a different way. It's like you were like in a rut. I was in a rut. But like, what's the reason for the rut? It doesn't matter. And, and, you th- and like you said, you thought you had it all. I did. Like- and I felt guilty for feeling not so grateful and so blessed. And I knew I was blessed. I was grateful and I felt guilty for somehow just not feeling fulfilled. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of things. I mean, that's, um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs experience like this same thing at yes. some point, because like you said, it's like, you, you, you know, you have it all right. Yeah. But like at the same time, then you feel guilty. Yeah. But then also you're stuck in a rut and you can't, sometimes you feel like you can't grow. Yeah. Or right? you're it's, so successful on paper. And you try to tell somebody that you're irritated by something or frustrated by something or confused by something. And people look at you and say, what are you, nuts? Like, look look at the life you have. Mm-hmm. I would do anything for, to have that life. But when yeah. you're in that space, you know, there aren't always a lot of people to confide in. Right. Yeah. I feel like sometimes some people, because I experience this too, like some people just like they can't not, not, I guess because they're, maybe they're not as, you know obsessed about what they do kind of like somebody like you or I right and they can't really you know I feel like we a lot of us have this like never satisfied attitude Mm -hmm. at least I do it's the outside in approach you know it doesn't work yeah it's like you know yeah we have all this but then it's like what's next you know it's like that constant Mm -hmm. um, in a good way but sometimes it can be bad it can be harmful but and that's truthfully what I've learned is that we all have automatic programming we all have thoughts running on autopilot in our brains that um, were put there for a various amount of reasons. A lot of times it's childhood upbringing, your environment. Sometimes it could be trauma or just something that seemed traumatic as a child. You know, it doesn't, you know, to somebody else it might not be. Um, But those thoughts create neural pathways in our brains that are on autopilot. Our brains are always trying to keep us safe. Right. So then when we have these external circumstances and we try to base our life on those, that's just the 5% of our conscious brain thinking like 95% of our thoughts are in our subconscious mind. All right. This is about to get interesting. Yes. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Okay. All right. Go deeper. Explain this. Okay. So we think between 60,000 and 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot. 95 to 97% are automated in our subconscious minds. So when we try to make a change, when our conscious, our prefrontal cortex mind 
is like, I want to change or I want to grow my business or I want to start working out or whatever it is. But you've got like 40,000 thoughts basically telling you no. Right. Is that kind of like and you what don't you're... even know and you don't even know. And that's where like we use our willpower. And we're like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to go all in. I'm going to cut out all the carbs and I'm going to change my diet and throw out all the chips and I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. And <laughs> throw it's out like, all the chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's my idea. Throw, I throw out the chips. Yeah. My wife would definitely agree on that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like clean the clean the kitchen. Yep. Um, Just that I'll, I'll I'll finish the last bag. Yeah, and then and then yeah. I'll start Monday. <laughs> so yeah, finish the yeah. last bag. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't work. We use, we're using willpower at that point, and we're trying to force it. And our brain doesn't like that much change at one time. It just doesn't. It so. goes in. It you're using only willpower. It's it's like an iceberg. You know, it's you only see the tip, but there the whole bottom is underwater 90% yeah. is really what's driving you so how do you, you how do always you, yeah. go back to that old patterning sorry right, so how does somebody you know go dig deep into these you know hundred thousand million thoughts subconscious yeah. thoughts that's the power of neuro right? coaching bill yeah. so all right so tell me the secret yes. here so, like, so how, there's how, models yeah. yeah so how, how does somebody unveil that and bring like that subconscious mm-hmm. to yeah the conscious Ooh. Well, one way is you recognize patterns in your life. You know, I see this pattern and I try to change it and it keeps coming back, right? It could be, it could be anything. It could be relationships. It could be health. It could be work related. Um, Sometimes when people leave corporate environment and start their own business, they end up creating another job for themselves. Because it's so ingrained in them to just work. So yeah, to just, just to be the worker to and actually not. be the not... worker. So then they think, oh, I'm going to start my own business. And I'm going to start get, my own company. They and they trapped. actually, they create a job for themselves. Yeah. Because that's all their brain knows. Right. And that's their safety mechanism. It's like you went beyond the comfort zones of corporate. So your brain's like, boop, 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 come on back. Yeah. Come Subconsciously, on back. you don't even know what's happening. You don't even know what's happening. And then you wake up one day and you're, I hate my, I hate my business. So how does an entrepreneur like that, 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 you know, say leaves that, that like big yeah. corporate job, right? Starts their, starts their, their business, whatever it is. I mean, maybe it was a side hustle for a few years and they finally made the jump and they, they yeah. started the business and, and now they're doing this business, right? Full time as they're, you know, as, as an entrepreneur for mm-hmm. the first time, how does that person not get stuck mm-hmm. in that? I know like, you, you know, obviously a lot of it is subconscious, but how does, you know, for somebody listening or watching, like how could, you know, if, if, if they're about to, you know, go down this path, right, of entrepreneurship, how does somebody, you know, take some steps to sort of mitigate that? Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways. The one way is just to be aware, you know, start paying attention to your thoughts. Um, I just finished listening to The Untethered Soul, which was really good. Is another know if you podcast? No, this is a book. Oh, okay. It's called The Untethered Soul, and I don't know the author. I, That's sorry. okay. Somebody can just Google the name. <laughs> yeah, they can Google it. Um, but the whole first part of the book, he was talking about the roommate in your head, right? So we all have this like chitter chatter that's going on when we're watching TV or when we're driving. It's, you know, all these things. It's like, oh, that sign is cool. Oh, is the camera working? Like, yeah. oh, that lamp is cool. Like, as I'm talking to you, right. my oh, brain. I need, I need to feed. I need right? to water my fern. Yeah. And why the hell is Bill not wearing that sweatshirt? Oh, like, my God. The mindset right. hoodie. <laughs> right. I'm going to Photoshop the mindset hoodie into this whole episode. Yeah. Eric, please take care of that. <laughs> it would be like the dancing hoodie. The yeah. Screen. Look at a little guy on my shoulder yeah. over here. Buy my mindset hoodies. Yeah. <laughs> How much is it, Bill? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. Oh. How, how bad is that? Well, actually, yeah. I brought it up. Hold on. Hold on. I lie. It's um, $45. $45. Free shipping. <laughs> free, Great. free shipping. Count me in. Yeah. Shipping is free. Limited limited sizes available. Limited oh. sizes and quantities available. So okay. they're probably going to be sold out by the time this episode comes out. So um, no, I'm just kidding. There might be a couple left. So oh, well, I'm buying one. All right. So. There we go. Mindset hoodies. So yeah, be aware of that chitter chatter and just watch it. Un without judgment, right? We don't want to judge it. Our brains are wired to keep us safe, right? Like a caveman. Imagine a caveman walking out of the cave in the morning. He's not like, oh, what a beautiful sunrise. This is going to be a great day, (laughs) right? No, a caveman is like, creeping out looking around the corner making sure there's not a saber-toothed tiger yeah about to, about to yeah, kill him yeah. and his whole family right our brains are wired to keep us safe now safe is different for every single person sure it has a different That's tolerance a different version of safety um where was i going with this 
um, put me back just on track. Our, our, our brains are, are wired to, oh, yes. to, to right so just, we want to be thankful when we're watching our brain do its thing to keep us safe because it got us here we're living we're breathing we're thriving humans we're making podcasts about mindset hoodies yes you know we're doing the damn thing right and we should be happy and not judge it and that's so easy to do why am i feeling this way i feel guilty i shouldn't you know we should ourselves to death right we do yes we're so good at shooting ourselves coulda woulda yeah, shoulda shoulda right yes so watch your thoughts is number one number two write them down write them down or speak them out loud if it's like, I sound like an idiot on this podcast right now. If that's going through my head, what I would do after this, which it it's not. No, you're sounding <laughs> yeah, good. No, you're I'm feeling good. confident. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I would like leave here and go write it down, not put it in my phone, but write it down. And when it when you bring it from your subconscious mind into your muscle memory, you're bringing it to your conscious mind, and that's where you can start to um, refute it and and make it improvements. Yeah, and it loses its power. Imagine all the negative things we say to ourselves on a consistent basis. People are so mean to themselves. They would never say the things that they say to themselves to other people. Never. We are mean to ourselves We're sometimes. We're so mean. I know. So once you write it down and you can see it, you realize, oh, this doesn't make sense. Or where the hell is that coming from? You know, and that starts to lose its power. All right, so so neuro coaching. Yeah. Exactly. I know we I know we obviously kind of already touched on it. Mm-hmm. But like like what is it? Like I I'm pretty sure you have like a certification, right? This is I do. I have yeah. a certification. Yeah, right. yes. Okay, so, this so is like, I went to Dr. Right. Shannon Irvin. This is like a real thing. And oh. I, yes, I okay. went directly to her and I got certified through her her year-long program. Okay. So what is what is the program consist of? Like how does how do you, how do you get certified? Oh, we learned so much about the brain, about science. We did a lot of, we learned how to coach. We learned the models, how to ask the questions, how to read people, um, you know, when, when to push and what, you know, what to listen for, those kinds of things. Um, and it's a three stage kind of process. And what I did was I took the neuro coaching models and I combined them with design principles because my goal is to really help people design their lives. We have the capability to design or redesign our lives. We did up until this point, whether we realized it or not. What we have right now, where we are, not where we want to be, where we, every single person, where we are right now, it, we kind of created it. Kind of just like, our brain adapted to the conditioning and our brain kept us safe or whatever. Kind of just wired us subconsciously to the point that you're at right Right. now in your life because your your thoughts and emotions create beliefs and then our beliefs influence our decisions and actions which create our results in our lives right so at to some extent now i'm not saying there that crappy things don't happen in people because they do crappy things happen Um, and i don't want to make light of any situation but the good news is that our brains are capable so very capable of controlling our thoughts and when we catch the ones that aren't supporting who we want to be or the vision that we see for our business or our health or our relationships we can change it i love it we can choose a different thought i totally agree yeah so i created the designer's approach i basically took the neuro coaching models designed them with design combined them with design principles to create the designer's approach to success And through that process, I work one-on-one with business leaders to help them dig in. The first uh, phase is define. So we go in and define what those thought patterns are that are the blocks. Really, those are the blocks. Um, And define what success truly means for them. Everybody's version of success is different. Like earlier, I was asking you what your values were. Because your version of success, your purpose for wanting to be successful is different than somebody else, right? And when we know that, we can shut out any kind of shoulds that the world puts on us. You should be farther along. You should be more successful by now. 
You you know? Yeah, there's all these preconceived notions like you yeah. gotta be married, you gotta do Says this. Who? You gotta, yeah. This is right. my life. Right. I design it. I wanna design it. And then we can empower people to to do that. Um, and then the next phase is design it. So we're gonna design the new thinking patterns. We design it. We choose our thoughts. We choose our version of success and we take action steps toward it. Like I said, that drastic change our brain isn't going to like. So we break down uh, step by step by step into like compound interest, little teeny tiny micro wins um, to help people slowly move toward their goal, which actually happens faster because it's more long term and more permanent, right? Because we're not going back to old patterning or actually changing our brain. And then the final is we develop new neural pathways in our brains. So develop is phase three. Phase three is develop. Yeah. Explain it. Well, it takes 67 days to create a new neural pathway in our brains. And we create new neural pathways all the way, all the time. But if we don't break down the ones that are decades old, it's like layering on top and they're going to fight each other. Like when a situation comes up, if we have a new belief, like I'm meant to be a millionaire, (laughs) let's just say that for example, like I'm meant to be a millionaire. I'm going to tell myself like affirmations, right? People tell themselves all these affirmations all the time. Oh, I'm just going to take their affirmation, put it in my, my life and, and it'll magically happen. It doesn't work like that. We can't just layer on somebody else's stuff onto our old beliefs and think it's going to be permanent because it's not. The old stuff is stronger. How do you feel about, um, it just it reminded me when you said, um, like, you know, you, used, you said the words like somebody may say, hey, I want to be a millionaire. Yeah. Or I, I should be a millionaire, yeah. right? So it reminded me, I'm sure you probably heard this and a lot of people, you know, probably heard this. Um, it just made me think of, of Jim Carrey. And you know the story where Jim Carrey wrote himself a $10 million check like before yeah. he actually like ever made it big? Yeah. Like, do you know that? Do you, like, yeah, you know that I have. I have. So like, it's just kind of interesting because... Here's the difference. Yeah, all right. When he wrote that check, he believed it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that's why I brought the he example actually, up. actually, in his bones, in his body, he already had that neural pathway when he wrote it. He That's why he wrote it is because he truly believed it. Not because it was something he wanted. Maybe it is because it's something he wanted, but he believed it was possible for him. Yeah, and I think a lot of people like just don't think, you know, something is possible or anything's possible. I right. feel like a lot of people just um Or you want to. Sure, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I'll try that lifestyle on. But maybe maybe in your upbringing, you know, rich people were greedy. <laughs> I use this in my talk a lot, like on the Titanic. <laughs> You know, when you watch the Titanic, it's like this three hour long movie. And it came out when I was in middle school and I went to the theater six times to see it. So that's it. Just six. Yeah, just six in the theater. So I'm like young and impressionable (laughs) and in the theater, like full experience, three hour movie, six times. Like you better believe that movie had an impact on what I believed about being poor and about being rich. Okay. So so so, many other people. Yeah. So you had this like now like preconceived notion that like poor people were virtuous they had more fun you know but rich people man they're greedy they steal the boats from poor people right and so in my mind that was bad like you don't want to be rich that would mean you're greedy and it's just a story that my brain made up to keep me safe okay that's a rule okay that's enough data repeated enough times that I'm gonna record it and shove it away in my subconscious mind. Yeah, it's crazy to think that something as small as that oh, can it, just be... And you don't even know it. You don't even know that it happens. No. And especially from a young age, you know, because I feel like, yeah. you know, thinking back to like when you were a kid, like it's crazy that the small things that yeah that stick in your head and then you believe them to be true. Sure. But also, even if they're not true, you still just believe it. You just it. believe You them. just believe it no matter what. Like, What if anything, we could believe anything? I believe it all. Yeah. And the one thing that stuck in my head, I feel like I said it on a previous episode very recently, but I'm like, I'm on this train of this, this, um, this quote. Uh, I started, when I started karate, I was like eight or nine years old and I'll never forget it. There was a, on the wall, 
in the dojo, which is like the karate school for those that don't know the lingo, right? So there was this there was this quote on the wall, and it said, "Winners never quit, quitters never win." Mm-hmm. And I think for for a long time, especially as a kid, like, you, I, I I mean I, I think about it differently now, but back then it was probably just like you thought of it as a kid because you're like, you just think of it you equ- just equated to winning, right? And it's like winning and losing, right? Yes. Um, but now when I think about it, you know, n- you know, now as like a, you know, an adult, you yeah. know, it, uh, it really has nothing to do with winning, at least to me. Right. Has, to, for, this is for me at least. Yeah. Um, and anyone can disagree, but I think about it. It's, it has nothing to do with winning. It's just about not quitting. Not quitting. That's it. Yeah. It's just like, and I don't think I thought that way as a kid. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't even our, know what, I don't even know what I thought. Our brains don't recognize the negatives. Well, okay. So let me, let me back up. Our brains have negativity bias. So anything negative that it hears is nine times more powerful than something positive, which is just our brain keeping us safe. Okay. But also when we try to say new affirmations um, and like speak new words into your life, it doesn't recognize not. So like it's not going to recognize not quitting. All it hears is quitting or winning. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. so anytime you want to speak new life and redesign your life, it always has to be in the positive. Yeah. And like I said, that quote, like literally I think about it all the time. Like yeah. it's, it's crazy to, That's awesome. it's crazy to even like, you know, like, like talk yeah. about it now. Cause, cause like I said, it just, it, it, it stuck with me forever. Yeah. And, you know, looking back on it, like of all the things I did, like, you know, growing up as a kid, any other sports and things like that, like. I feel like no matter what, like I never, like I never gave up at like anything. Yeah. And I think it, it, that's it was like in it your was muscle memory. It was because of that, that quote on the wall. Yeah. I mean, like literally, I don't think, you know, I just never gave up. I mean, like whether it was yeah. running a race, even if I was having a really bad race, I mean, I could have just stopped, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, you would run, but I would just, I, I, even though I knew it was like embarrassing how bad you were doing, you just finished. Yeah. No matter what, like you just didn't well, give it up. And that, just that like was this the podcast. Yeah. But but here's the cool part too is that those those same things maybe could hold you back. All right, give me an example. So, you wanted to start this podcast and you did. And you knew you weren't going to give up. And right. you haven't. I'm still here. So, if that mentality is there, like I will not give up when I start something. Will that keep you from starting something? Like starting something else? Yeah. Mm. Until I, I you're wanna, like 100 percent ready. No, nah, I want to start something else every day. Do you? I, I do. I got. I got like. I just get all these crazy like ideas and thoughts. I was talking to my friend Denny Corby today, and like Aww. we're him and I. You probably know Denny, right? Yeah. Um, but him and I are like you know conspiring on some new things, and by the time this episode comes out, maybe we'll be doing it. I don't want to reveal anything yet, but like, but like it's just stuff like that. Magical like, I'm kinda, reveal. Yeah. Ma- yeah. That's right. <laughs> he might make me appear somewhere. I don't know. Um. But uh. But no. It's just like I'm always. Not that I'm always like looking to, I don't know, I guess I'm always, I'm always like thinking like, and just always like, how can I, how can I do this better? Yeah. What can I do here? I just like get yeah. all these crazy ideas. That's the ideas. entrepreneur's mindset. Like yeah. you're destined to. I'm just yeah, always like, yeah, like it's just always like, what, what can I do mm-hmm. next? Like, how can I develop this more? How can yeah. I make that better? How can I get more people involved? How, yeah. can, it's, just, it's just like, yeah. it, it doesn't stop. Yeah. Those you are know? good questions. Yeah. So. Winners never quit and quitters never win. That's right. That's it. I'm going to probably say that a million more times on every other episode yeah. now. You know what? It's like winner. It's not win or lose. It's win or learn. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. So let's get back a little bit to this like neuro coaching thing, even though it's still, we're still on the same topic, but, um, so, all right. So you take on client, a client, right? Mm-hmm. This is like a one-on-one yeah. thing or yeah. is this like a group or, or, or could it be both? Well, I'm developing a group. Um, I am developing a group program and that one is more for employees. Um, but right now I don't have the uh, more, the people who want one-on-one want the exclusivity. They want the, um, confidentiality. Sure. Yeah. And so, and the, like the one-on-one attention, like they're the further, faster people, you know? They're like not not shortcut takers, not like save a couple bucks. They're like, no, I want the answers. I'm I want it in and out. I'm committed. I'm going to do the work and let's see where this goes. Yeah. 
and it's amazing. Everybody's different. All right. So like um, going back to like, all right, so phase one, it, you know, is defined, right? Mm-hmm. And you talked about success in blocks, right? Like, can yeah. you give me an example? Like, you know, you know obviously you probably don't have to mention names because you have some confidentiality yeah, stuff, Yeah, I don't want to. But um, like, you know, how about like an example of like, uh, like a block? Like what, like what would be an example of a block that somebody Do you has? want me to tell you mine? Yeah. This is, yes, this is perfect. So I found example. mine and I don't know where it came from. It's Titanic. That's where it came from. Maybe. <laughs> um, so, so in the neuro coaching certification program, there was a woman named Audrey Faust, and she'll love that I'm saying her name on this podcast. Shout out but, to Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Audrey. We were like both from Pennsylvania. There were people from all over the world in this program. And we're like, okay, let's jump right in and practice coaching each other every other week. You coach me, I'll coach you. So we were like practicing before they even told us to practice. And so it was on one of those calls. I honest to God, I don't remember what she asked me, but my answer was, oh, because I don't matter. And she was like, do you realize what you just said? And I was like, yeah, I don't matter. It's not about me. And she was like, Maria, do you understand what you just said? And I said, yes, (laughs) I understand. And I was like backing it up. Like, it's not about me. It's about my clients. It's about my kids. It's about my husband. It's about, you know, and I like went on and on and on. Like, and I thought I was being selfless and virtuous. And I, and then she said to me, where else is that showing up in your life? That I don't matter. And I realized like you know, you have those moments where you like your whole life flashes before your eyes. My whole and I'm life, like, right, son this, of a bitch. Right now, my entire life is in the same statement and scenario as you is flashing before before my eyes. Yes. It is. Yes. But and go it's on. Like, tell, yeah, son finish. of a bitch. There it is. And I kept it in. If you go to inspired studio, dap is forward slash about, I think, in the copy that I wrote. Now I wrote this years ago. It says at the top about and then it says hint it's about you not about us and then like in the copy I like go on and on to say like it's not about us our brand was developed in black and white like our our clients are everything in between like we did we want to like be in the background subtle quiet like it's not about us it's about you um so while that's good a good like virtuous way of being and probably a way that I will never change that thought when applied to my personal care, my personal health. Everything suffered. Everything. I put myself last time and time and time and time and time and time again to the point that it did affect my life and, and you, the decisions I made. And, and couldn't I couldn't get out of bed. Well, yes. This was it. That's it. There's full circle. It's all going back to this. It was about my kids. I didn't matter. I didn't even have to eat or drink. All I had to do was feed my kids from my body. That's was my job. And that was a turning point for me. And Audrey helped me realize, no, I don't want to, I don't want that saying running my life anymore. Will it always be who I am? Yes. Is it going to change me completely? No, but it is going to, and it has changed my life. So, all right. So I think what you're kind of hinting at here is balance. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, you're now going to ask me to pick a marble. OK. From the marble thing. Yes. And let's ex- yes. let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. So I have this bowl of marbles here and like that. Like, do you like that transition? Yeah. To the marble bowl? Yeah. Well, we want balance. Yeah. yeah. We want balance. <laughs> um, yeah. And I really had this idea during COVID uh, when the whole world was shut down and people were freaking out. They can't work and the kids are at home screaming. It's wild and, times. Oh, it was wild times. And I was, and I remember business was slow and I was playing with my kids during the day and I wasn't worried about it. Now I had been doing this work prior to the pandemic and I will say I personally kind of went through it with flying colors because every, every, you know, moment that was different, I was like, where's the plus side here? I get extra time with my kids. You know, I don't have to go anywhere. I can sleep at like whatever it was. Like I was like, okay, like shut out the world and the fear and the drama. 
what can I focus on that is good for us? And and that's what I did. But anyway, so I was playing marbles with my kid the one day and everybody was talking about that. And I was looking at the marble and I was realizing that it already was completely perfectly round, perfectly whole. And not all marbles, but some of them have a lot of different colored swirls inside of them. And when you turn it, you know, some like this one, the blue is bigger. There's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Sometimes they overlap. Sometimes they intersect. But as you turn it, you see a different side. And I realize that we are a lot like that, that humans have many different colors, you know, and maybe for me, blue is my family. And that is one of my highest values. And that will always be connected to everything I do. And that's okay that that's bigger most of the time, right? And maybe for me, the yellow is art and painting. It's just a little bit and it's just there. It just pops in every once in a while. And maybe the red is my my career and my, and my business and whatever I want to create in the world. And that, look at that. It's all the way around the marble. Is that bad? Is that good? Does it matter? No two marbles are the same. No two people are the same. So what if we looked at our lives as perfectly whole as they are, perfectly round? I'm picking a marble. Pick a marble. Let's see. What colors do you have? I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of in the same blue one as you, but... There's a lot of blue ones in there. That one's too dark. (laughs) I'm like so indecisive. I don't like that one. I'm just going to have to go with the blue one too. All right. I feel like I'm the same... um, yeah, I got the blue. The yeah. swirls are red. Some yeah. of my swirls are bigger than yours. Yeah. They're different. Yeah. They're the same. Yeah. But yeah, this but is hey. it. And here's the kicker. <laughs> all right, here we go. The punchline. Super this, cliche kicker. Right, this is it. Get ready, people. Ready? Mindset hoodies. <laughs> when you <laughs> when you push it, it keeps on rolling. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. If only, we ju- we only can just if the keep table on rolling. Only if the table is not level. <laughs> With enough resistance. <laughs> Yeah, it, it will roll. All right, there's your yes. marble. Here's my marble. Everyone should have a marble. Darren got a marble. Darren got a marble. Yeah, matches his glasses. It does. The red yeah. matches his glasses. It was yeah. a nice marble. Yeah, see-through marble. Mm-hmm. There are some see-through ones. All right, I get to keep this. Right, this yeah, is please. my this is my takeaway. Yeah, this is my takeaway from this episode. You that, can see my marble. That and the friend fern. Yes, <laughs> our our fern here. <laughs> it's a lovely fern, yeah. by the way. Yes, I'm I'm happy about my fern. Yeah. And my marble. Yeah. So thank you. I'm happy I love about the, my uh, hoodie that I'm gonna buy. That's right. <laughs> they're gonna be sold out. By the time this episode, I think so too. Yeah, they're gonna be sold out. No one's everyone's gonna be actually gonna be mad because when they go to listen to this, so many people I know this is gonna be, so many people are gonna go to buy it because like it's gonna be so cool. Yeah. Should I make one that says like I didn't lose my marbles? Yes. <laughs> yes. And maybe maybe my next one. Will be winners never quit and quitters never win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just making that up. But if somebody wants it, let me know. I'll spend too much money to have them made and never make any money back. And two <laughs> just people a DM away, and, and two people will buy them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So there's a few mindset hoodies left, people. They're flying this off the like, shelves right this now. This is like QVC. <laughs> yeah. This is really yeah. glad. All right, guys. Oh, I'm hearing. Yes, we're down to 100. Yes, they're um they're phoning in. <laughs> uh, the people the people are calling in right now. Yes. Yeah, the producers guys, the producers of the show here said yes. that there's only five mindset hoodies left. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, please, if you order now, free shipping, <laughs> and uh, yeah. maybe I'll throw in a free. Uh, and you better call because if you try to do it online, mini, it, you might not be fast enough. Mini pallet. Oh. You know, maybe you'll get a mini pallet. Oh. If there's any left. Fancy. These are nice coasters. If you call now, mm-hmm. you'll get free shipping. We'll double your order. 1 800. Okay, I won't double mindset. your order. Uh, 1 800, <laughs> 1 800 my, mindset. Hope it's available. I'll buy it right after the show. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm that type no, of person. I am. I'm that type of person. I'll probably buy, I'll probably look, look for a domain right after this. See, this is what I told you. This is where my mind goes. Yeah. Now, after the show, I'm going to be looking at domains and anything else with the word mindset in mm. it. How many people do you think? are probably turned the show off now because I've said mindset too many times. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully not. Hopefully not too many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how can we rope them back in? Uh, geez, I don't know. Um, drop some value real quick so we can, we can get people back oh in here. Goodness. Some more neuro coaching. All right. So after, all right. So, 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 okay. So take me through this. So you can do the three steps, right? Define, yeah. design, develop. Yes. 
And then what is it? Is it like a three month, six month program? Is it a mix of two? And then do you just like let people off the leash? Like how does it go? Yeah, it's three months. Some people choose to stay on longer um, and continue moving on because life changes and, you know, new things come up. And why not have somebody there to help coach you and steer you in the right direction and say, no, no, no. Remember we talked about this a couple months ago? Like this is your trigger. Like let's stay focused on your goals. And it just helps people move further faster. And that's that's why I love working with business leaders is because they're the ripple effect. You know, they're the leaders of the company and what they do is going to influence the people below them, you know, and that they're going to take that home to their families and it creates that ripple effect. So that's why I like, I like going right for the top. Yeah. So that like you're, you know, on the surface, it may seem like you're, you're just helping one person. Right. But in reality, at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're helping this person who, like you said, is it's like a tidal wave yes. you know, effect and, and everything that they do yeah. that they learned, you know, from working with you, they're going to take that and they're going to implement that, whether mm-hmm. it's at work, their business, they may have a hundred employees right. and those hundred employees have, you know, two kids and yeah. sisters and, you know, it's like, yeah, right. I know. I'm you so know? deep. This is crazy. <laughs> I know. We're like down the rabbit hole. I know. Of mindset hoodies. <laughs> 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 People are really going to hate me yes. <laughs> after this one. <laughs> God, that joke has like really ran its course now. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't quit. See? Yeah. No, That's you back don't. That's <laughs> back to my, back to my, uh, my famous quote, uh, which I didn't make it up, but yeah, you know. no, it's so, a good one. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. I forget what the hell it was. Um, so, okay. Okay. So, but no, this is what it was. So when you say business leaders, yeah, right, this can be a mix of, it's not really, you know, it's, it's a business owner mm-hmm. or, or it could just be, um, CEO. A, like a CEO. So like, yeah. it doesn't have to be somebody that owns their own business. Right. No. Cause I feel like some people may, you know, that may, you know, want to get into, you know, you know, taking yeah. on a coach may think, well, I'm not a business owner, but right. I, but I'd be interested in right. learning. Even like right? marketing directors or anyone who has like a, a difficult job and you're stressed out and you're triggered all the time. It's like, well, let's figure it out. Let's, let's get in there and figure it out. Yeah, so it 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 it's really just somebody that just wants to lead, lead, yeah, in any way. Somebody who's ready to step into their leadership and feel empowered and feel confident and be more productive, uh, realize their visions a lot faster. And, and when you know, going back to you know, like kind of like that, like when you said you were like in that rut. Was part of it, did you feel like you had like an imposter syndrome? That oh, like, for sure. That like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. For sure. There's all kinds of self-sabotage, uh, imposter syndrome, perfectionism. I had somebody tell me today, Maria, done is better than perfect. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, you know, uh, even like overindulging in like exercise or something like those are all ways of our, our brain is keeping us safe. And when we recognize our self-sabotage, we can say, oh, what is that blocking me from? We can actually use self-sabotage as a guidepost to show us what's going on in our subconscious mind. So it could even be something that you're doing that's a positive thing. Oh, for sure. Like, oh, I have to work out every day for an hour. Otherwise, I can't get through the day. And like, that could be a distraction. You, you get stuck in like a bad mindset. Right. And if I don't do it, then the, your and whole you, day you is feel, shit. And you feel guilty. Yeah. Right? Right. So, so like, it's kind of like the opposite. It, it is. Our brains will pull out all the stops to keep us safe. Mm-hmm. Brain fog, being tired, um putting too many things on your to-do list that you know you'll never get done, but you just keep putting them on there. And then you just feel like, oh, I'm busy, busy, busy. Busy work is a big one, especially for yeah. for business leaders. You know, because if you're busy, that doesn't necessarily mean you're being productive. Right. You know? I think that that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Can't delegate because you feel like you can't, whatever, trust people or no one's going to do it as good as me. Yeah. How, you know? how does somebody get past that? Yeah. Dig into why. Why? Like why? What, what? are you like, afraid why? of is gonna happen? Yeah, like is somebody. And gonna... why are you afraid of that? And why are you afraid of that? And if that happens, what are you telling yourself? You know, and what does it mean about you? It's like it's so many layers deep. There is. Is this is um, Inception? <laughs> you ever see the movie Inception? I think so. Yeah. It's been a while. With like Leonardo DiCaprio. But and it's, it's like so many like, layers deep. It's not just like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's not just like, why that? Mm-hmm. Then it's like, okay, then there's that. And then yeah. it's like, well, now why that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like the balance between the head and the heart. Like there's a lot 
Um, there's a lot of spirituality that is tied up into all of this too. Um, spirituality and energy. I don't lead with that because some people don't buy it. <laughs> They'll buy the science and that's just enough to let them go in and, and start doing this kind of introspective work. Um, but it is, it's all tied together. Yeah. Yeah. And the why thing I think the is why a, yeah. it goes back to your values and what, you know, what makes you unique? You know, you can take your mess and turn it into your mission. You know, your trauma and turn it into your mission, your purpose in life. It could be a business. It doesn't have to be a business. It could just be a thing you do, you know, and everybody's version of success is different. So that's another reason why I like one-on-one is like we can really be super personalized. Yeah. And I think also for people that like, you know, kind of like you said, going back to like the perfection thing and people uh, like are afraid to like start something yeah. like like whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a business or like a yeah. like an entrepreneur thing. It could just be a little hobby or something that you want to do, but you're just afraid that people might think it's stupid or silly, so you yeah. just don't do it. Mm-hmm. And like I always just tell people like just start, you know, yeah. like whatever it is, just start it and you can always change course after. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't like it's not set in stone. No. And I think that's the that's the other thing I think a lot of people get hung up on. Yeah. Is they feel like they can't like once they start a certain path, like they can't change. They can't change it. Mm-hmm. Or like because now it's like society's looking at you like, oh right. well that's the path you're it's on. You're not, you're not allowed to right. you're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to change course. Right. But like mm-hmm. I think changing your mind is probably one of the biggest strengths. A hundred percent. But people like don't I think most people don't see it that way. No. And it's like a lot of people be like, oh, my God, like that person, he left that job to go do that. Like, why? Why would you do that? Like, yeah. you know, it's like well, because he changed his mind and uh-huh. that's what he wanted to do. Like, yeah. so what? So what? You know, I know. <sighs> Mindset. I just dot com. <laughs> it's definitely already. Taken. I just think everyone has so much more potential than they even realize. I agree. Every single person. Oh, 100%. Like this is not like just business. Like every single person is capable of so much more than they can even imagine. Yeah. And you really, you you just don't know. You just in, don't know. Until you actually start. Yeah. Until you start. Yes. Like literally. Action is, really helps to build new neural pathways. Yeah. And there's so many things like even just like for myself, like in the last year, you know, like with growing this podcast and yes. I bought this building, right? Like all the things like that, that like and you know transpired over the last year it's like um some things i maybe i just didn't know how to do or whatever and they just went into it and did it and like you just learn so much and like most times with me like whenever i like do something like even with creating content like content like you know around the show anything not necessarily like not necessarily like this actual episode per se yeah but like even if you just want to make like a reel you know, like, you know, of something you're doing, whatever, you know, and you're making a reel for Instagram or something for TikTok and you can't like think of like the perfect thing to do. Yeah. Right. I always find literally the best thing to do is just to like, just if you're, if you're taking a video, if you're filming a bunch of guys, just film a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you don't have to have a plan. No, I think that's where people get hung up, especially with content, especially with content. Like I'm not saying to just work on the fly all the time and never have a plan. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is like, if you want to, if you want to make a video about that blue door, for example, like just start making the video about the blue door. Like just start taking some videos. You take 10 separate videos and they're all on your phone and then just get the stupid little free app on your phone and then just cut and piece it together. And I guarantee nine out of 10 times, it's going to turn out way better than you actually thought yeah because you just like went and did it it. and you didn't just like think creative process that's it you're you're a natural creative but i never thought i was like up until like a couple years ago we all are i know but that but that's my point we all are yeah and we have the capability and until you do it yes you just don't know that it's there you don't know it exists just try like because like that childlike curiosity yeah Yeah. i think i think so many people lose that obviously we all do as as for sure adults growing up but like as a kid, like thinking back, like, do you remember like when you're kids, like you would do anything. Oh yeah. It didn't matter. Like you would, you would do something and you would literally fall, like, yeah. literally physically fall down. Oh yeah. But what did you do? You just got back up. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You didn't you know, even like, think about it. Yeah. And I think, I think about that with a lot of things now, like in life and in business, just like, I feel like people, you know, we should adopt like a, almost like this mindset. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God, yeah. That, oh, that my was, un- that was unintentional yeah. by the way. Um, like the, like the childhood mindset of mm-hmm. just like a, a kid will, 
you know, right. tr- basically try anything. Like, right. they're, because they don't know. No, because they, they don't, don't know. know better. They have no, they don't know what's going to happen. No. And they're just trying mm-hmm. and failing. Mm-hmm. But they keep but trying and they keep getting better. They know they want to walk or they know they want to stand or like, yeah, they exactly. just keep doing it. Right. Yeah. And there's no one really telling them like, oh, no, you can't do that. Or no, you suck at doing it. You suck at, at walking. Right. Like, right. No you one's going to tell more a more than you stood yeah. today. Like, no, no one's going to tell a kid that. Yeah. You know, but like as an adult doing anything. And think about anything, it. They're, they're in an environment where everyone's walking around them. Right. So they're just naturally mirroring their environment. Because exactly. they know they're meant to do that. Right. Like on a deep, deep, you know. Yes. And if only we can adapt that mindset yes. as. And believe like I know I'm meant to be, you know, a neuro coach. I know <laughs> I'm meant to sell 10 million mindset hoodies <laughs> after this show. Like, yeah. Now, all jokes aside, but no, seriously, I, yeah. I, I really believe that, too, because it's just I think of, you know, what you really, you know, what you think of. Like you sort of become the oh. content, the content that you consume. Yes. You also like become yes. that like if you if you're going to obviously this is like so cliche, but if you could consume negative content, well, yes. you're just gonna be a negative person. Yes. You know, and like it's well, just you know, that's what it's all our about. Our brain is collecting data. So it's like you, we are conscious about the nutrition we put in our bodies. Well, sometimes some people I know I'm not great at it, um, but we need to be conscious about the nutrition that we're putting in our brains because when we're just mindlessly scrolling i mean what is getting it burned in our lots 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 yeah and anything repeated is becoming a belief and you don't even know it kids that's why i'm like oh i hate kids on digital but like all to get like 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 uh, how much a little bit you know i let my kids on their ipads how old are they we do they're six and seven of course we do and they were incredible babysitters when I had to work, um, <laughs> you know, during the pandemic. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm I'm worried, you know, now that I know what I know about the brain, I'm like, what's going in there that I don't know? Yeah. What are they looking at? Yeah. What's being stored? Mm-hmm. In what's their, being stored? In their brains, those little brains. Those little brains. But the best thing we could do, we have something called mirror neurons. Uh, where we, if, if you're celebrating something and you're really excited about it, like I'm going to be excited too. If you're crying about something, you know, we all have empathy and I'm, I might want to cry too. Um, but we mirror our environment. So, so I don't even remember where I was going with that. Your kid's about consuming the, the content. And like- yeah. And, and, and about putting yourself first. If you invest in yourself. And by invest, I mean take the time and the attention and the energy that you need to evolve and to grow into your highest potential. The people around you are going to start to want to do the same thing because they're just going to, it's just going to be a natural thing. A lot of times, especially as parents, we think, oh, my kids have to come first. You know, I have to put myself last. But when you are modeling putting yourself last, Kids think that that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, then they're going to grow up doing the same thing. They're going to grow up doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. I see what's going on here. Do you see the ripple effect? I, I do. I do. That is so important to my me. My life is flashing before my eyes mm. with mindset hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's wearing them. Everybody's wearing mindset <laughs> yes. hoodies right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. A hundred percent. Like it's, it, it really is just an, you know, that environment it's just that's just what you're going to become to know yeah and like same thing like back to the content it's just you whatever content basically right. you consume you're gonna kind of go down that path and have that mentality mm-hmm. I didn't not say to the mention other, the algorithm more, right will feed you more of what you're looking at right too. yeah so you click on one wrong thing for yeah. get it your, your, get your it. feed's like by the way that sucks sometimes Ugh. Sometimes like I, I don't I, like on Instagram, for example, I don't mean to click on like some certain things like no, I'll or you just put your phone down and like a real place for like more than yeah. it should. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're not, not, being bombarded. Yeah. Like, and now all you're watching is like weird videos that like, I know you don't ever want to be watching. I'm getting the weirdest ads right now. It's all about hair growth. I'm like, what? I don't care about hair yeah, growth. Right. So like, you what accidentally, it, yeah, you I must accidentally have clicked accidentally, on one. Yeah. yeah. And then, then your, your algorithm is like your feed is like screwed for like a couple of weeks until yeah. until you like you have that's to super annoying. I think the trick is just to go on and just l- start liking things that you do oh that's like, a good idea way. yeah yeah um because I'm super annoyed I I'm think like, no this is not yeah one of my other guests just recently said it too um I'm pretty sure 
he said in an episode, like literally like intentionally go in on Instagram and just start like go to the pages and the people that you actually like to follow and yeah. that you actually like to consume their content and just start liking if, if you don't already. Yeah. Or even if it's just people you don't know, it doesn't have to be someone you know, but just go in and, you know, go f- just find, you know, a page that you like and just start interacting yeah, with it. That's such a good point. And just do it, it like intentionally, like kind of like um, excessively. Yeah. You know, like 10 times. And yeah. then that way, I think you're, the algorithm will kind of reset yes. itself for you. I love the dancers. <laughs> yeah. I love watching the dancers. I could watch them all day. People dance and just yes. like whatever. Like, yeah, just cool, like, like dance. Like viral, like type. Yeah. Yeah. On TikTok or Instagram? Uh, inst- I don't have TikTok. Okay. All right. So just Instagram. I'm old. It's all right. <laughs> I kind of fell off the TikTok train. I got I got to hop back on. Yeah, I don't know so, if I'm ever gonna get on it. Get your mindset right. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So, I think we're gonna have to end the show because I'm gonna have to um, water my fern. Yeah, I think it's looking thirsty. Yeah, it is. It's uh, we're gonna have to water the fern before we shut down shop here. So, before we do, yeah. how can how can our listeners connect with you online? Uh, I am on LinkedIn. I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook at Maria Trano Success Coaching. And website is mariatrano.com? Yes. So if somebody... T-R-A-I-N-O. There it is. Yes. Train with an O. Train with an O. All right. So somebody like wants to book you. Are you like, are you accepting new clients? How does it work? Yes. I am accepting new clients. Like I said, I'm uh, working on a program for employees, but by the time this comes out, it might, the doors might be closed. Um, but reach out and maybe we'll get you into the next cohort. Um, but always you can book a 20 minute call with me, see if it's right for you, ask the questions. Maybe we'll even do a little hassy coaching if you're open to it. And, um, then we'll go from there. It's not for everybody and it's not for all the time. Just get your mindset right. People. Just get it right. Just get just it right. Put, just buy the hoodie. Just buy that damn mindset <laughs> hoodie. It's $45. Was it? Is that what I said? 45? I think that's what you said. You're right, it is. But yes. it's free shipping. But it's free shipping. It's free shipping. So on the stacks.com slash merch. Mm. There's other hoodies on there too, actually. Cool. There's all there's a lot of other merch on there. Not a lot, but there's like five other pieces of merch, actually. Awesome. So That's buy it all. Visionary thinking right there. And listen, like if anybody is actually going to buy something because you heard my commercial fifteen times during this episode, maybe send me a message and maybe I'll even give you a discount code. How about that? <gasps> How about that? Oh, that's about pretty that? sweet. You know? Yeah. So if I drilled it in your head enough. Yeah. And you feel bad for me because nobody's buying my stuff now at this point. Maybe send me a message. Maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll like, maybe I'll hook you up with a little code. A little coupon code. You know? A I little, like it. A little coupon. Coupon. Yeah. Yeah. Clipping those coupons. That's right. Every little bit counts. Uh-huh. Right? Especially in this Whew. world. Inflation. <laughs> Holy. Too much. <laughs> Too much. Son of a gun. But Taxes, you know what? All of it. We can't be in a lack mentality, Bill. No, no, you can't. Millionaires are made in recessions. I'm so writing myself on. that ten million dollar check tonight when I get home. Yeah, do it. I'll write it from Jim Carrey though, because I. Okay. Think <laughs> <laughs> that's really. How about that? Yeah. yeah that's really why it, it yeah. worked. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, I'm taking my marble, my fern, and my mindset hoodie. Awesome. And I'm going. Okay. This was this was this was cool. Yeah. Thanks this was for having fun. me, Bill. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad uh I'm glad we connected for this. Yeah, me too. I hope people found some value. I'm sure they did. Yes, I think so. Yes. So mindset hoodies. All right. Peace out. All right. Maria Trano on the Stacks <laughs> Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Bill.